Next up, Donovan Dela Cruz is a well-known state senator, and he's chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. Senator Dela Cruz has steered uh, state funding towards agriculture development and has a vision for Hawaii agri-food and aquaculture. Senator Dela Cruz, please come up. There he goes. Thank you. Thanks. You can give it with the box. Yeah. There you go. Oh, there, there you go. Aloha. Aloha. I just wanted to thank uh, Jim and Jason and all the participants, all the sponsors for being true believers in ag. Um, you know, we may not always agree specifically on the details, but I think all of us agree that Hawaii has so much potential in agriculture and that we ha together we can really get there. How many people talk to their elected representative on a regular basis or their, their senator, their, their house member? Not, not, too, not too many. <laughs> not too many. Okay, so that's a, that already says that there's a problem. <laughs> um, you know, I, I see other big advocates for agriculture here. Uh, we have the Ag Chair, Mike Gabbard. Give him a hand. <laughs> and we have our colleague, and our, uh, she's, a, she's also a farmer too, Senator Inouye from Hilo. So the Senate actually has quite a bit of ad advocates. We have Senator DeCoit, uh, we have Tim Richards, we have quite a bit of people who really do support ag. So what I'm gonna just talk about is something that we've developed over time in regards to what's happening in central Oahu. Is there, oh, is this, what, what are you? Yeah, that's her. No, that. Yeah, that's a point, that's a pointer. I think this advances. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this, has been my, this is my 13th year in the Senate, uh, but we started this project when I was on the, on the city council. So back in 2004, we started putting in money for Central Oahu. That's when Galbraith the state uh, was up for sale. And so the state, the county, OHA, and the military all combined efforts and monies to buy Galbraith the state. And that was the, the first start of what was going on with ag in central Oahu, and at least a new type of ag that we're trying to, uh, to move toward. And so it's a regional economic development plan, and then what are some more broad-based incentives and programs that we can do to support agriculture. So let me just tell you the story about uh, hazelnuts. So in, in Oregon, there are quite a bit of hazelnut farmers, and they always had too much hazelnuts or too many hazelnuts, depending on, I guess, if it's bushels or if it's the actual nuts. Um, and so the legislature put in money into a value-added center for OSU. So OSU developed this center in Portland, Oregon, not on campus. And uh, the, the quick example is when farmers had too many hazelnuts, or too much hazelnuts, they went to the center and what the center did was they developed entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs who would buy the hazelnuts and create hazelnut butter, hazelnut candy, hazelnut bars, hazelnut syrup. That ended up creating a value-added market. It, it relieved the farmers from all the product. And what they found out was most of the farmers, they didn't have time to, be, to do the, the business of farming and to do the value-added, which is why they had to develop entrepreneurs and small companies and help them with all the product development, the food science, the, the labeling, the, the food safety, all of, those, all of those things in a curriculum. And uh, Portland has a curriculum about 12 weeks to help starting entrepreneurs to become actual businessmen. And that was, that was what Oregon did. And we find that that's the case throughout the country. There's a number of states that have these value-added centers that have entrepreneurship curriculum. Okay, so for Central Oahu, um, and you know, it doesn't matter if it's Central Oahu, you could take Hilo, you could take Hana, you could take Javi, and you just, you have to end up doing a mapping of the area. 
for the region and really, and really try to figure out what's the infrastructure I need. What are we going to focus on? So let's just take Hilo, for instance. Hilo has a, has a decline um, you know, in conversations with Senator Inoy. They have less and less ornamental farmers. So that's a problem. But they have all these assets. They have the environment. They have the airport. They have the ability. They have some of the infrastructure to, to grow the ornamental industry in Hilo. But the ecosystem isn't, isn't really working. So we have to look, do an assessment of what's out there for, for a true economy, for regional economic development, for Hilo in regards to ornamentals. We have to work with the high schools, the community college, and UH Hilo to come up with pipelines for new ornamental farmers. We have to create internships. And then we have DBED can help with export. DBED can help with all these other things. We need facilities. We need storage. We already have half, at least more than half, of the infrastructure for an ornamental industry to, to expand already. But we're not doing it regionally focused. Unfortunately, how the state operates is we look at what's the statewide plan? How are we going to do this statewide? Well, that doesn't really work when you have all these different microclimates. That doesn't really work when you, they all need different types of infrastructure. That doesn't really work when all the high schools don't have the same ag program and all the, the community college. So we have to figure out a way that we're going to focus it regionally. So when people say, oh, you know, there's lots of money going into Central Oahu. Well, if we can come up with regional economic development plans throughout the state, then we should be investing more and more in that. And I know Senator Inouye was trying to do that. When she, was, uh, when she represented um, the Javi North, North Kohala, she, had tried, she fought for a lot of money to go into the water infrastructure so that we can start to get ag going again. Unfortunately, a lot of the sugar infra infrastructure that we have, we didn't maintain, we didn't invest in. So we have to, a lot of the wells, the, the irrigation systems, they, they weren't good enough for us to use. So she had to put in a lot of more money, more testing to figure out new ways where we could get infrastructure for, for water in North Kohala. Okay, so some of the things that we're going to need, uh, we, we've we got about 4,000 acres of ag land. What's the issue when you, when you buy pineapple land? When you buy pineapple land versus buying sugar land? Anybody know the biggest difference for it? No, they both had that. <laughs> the biggest issue is going to be water, because pineapple did not have the same water infrastructure that sugar did. Pineapple was a bromeliad. I mean, well, it just rained in Wahewa. And so you didn't have lots of irrigation ditches throughout Wahewa. Lake Wilson was for Wailua sugar. It wasn't for Dole Pineapple or Del Monte. So that's why a lot of money is going in to try to figure out, okay, how can we get more water onto the pineapple lands? And that takes a lot of money. So part of it, that's where we have the Wahewa irrigation system. And so there's a lot of planning going into that with different wells, ditches, trying to reuse some of the water from Lake Wilson. We've, we've been working with the city on reclaiming water from the Wahewa Wastewater Treatment Plant, developing a portfolio of irrigation for irrigation. Um, Leeward is going to have the value-added center in, in Wahewa. That's about 33,000 square feet. Again, it's like what I talked about. It's the creating a curriculum for entrepreneurs and small businesses. And we also have ag land in uh, Mililani that was purchased. This was all dole land. One of the things that we tried to do a while ago when Neil Abercrombie was still governor was to do a land swap. Try to identify all the ag lands out there that are still owned by big landowners and see if we could swap land with them and give them urban land along the, the rail route. So we would be able to give them a little bit of land with high value so that it could create revenue and housing, and we would take the ag land. But that didn't seem to go anywhere. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's, uh, there's other things. Oh. What did I do? There's other things going on here. And one of the things that we, um, that we purchased, and a lot of this is because of um, Jimmy Nakatani, who passed away, he, he really had a vision of what we had to purchase so that 
we could build a foundation for an ecosystem. And so one of the things that we purchased was about 40 acres of where Dole had its processing. And so right now, DAGS is working with ADC and developing infrastructure there. There's an RFP out so that we can do warehouses and HPP machines. Uh, DOE, the governor just released their money for a centralized kitchen in the area. So you're starting to see, hopefully at some point, all this money going in and then we can have enough momentum. When we do these one-off projects, it doesn't work. There's not enough momentum for it to start and, and be long-lasting. It needs to have an ecosystem of supporters and a lot of momentum. Um, we, we call it live, learn, work, play, but that's really our investment in the high school and the community college to create ag tech programs, food science programs. So as we build out the workforce, we have a future workforce. Uh, this is just another graphic of, of what, how we're trying to accomplish that and all the different partners. So you can see here education, community colleges, uh, DOE, uh, the centralized kitchen with DOE, research and innovation. Uh, this uh, CTAR has been helpful in making sure that they worked a lot with ADC and Jimmy. Jerry Sugano, she's been at the table really trying to help us figure out how we can make this plan work. Calvin Sewake has been involved. Uh, there's opportunities with, with economic development and DBED. We're also working with HHFDC on determining how we, how we can do more workforce housing, especially when you move farmers from private lands that they lease to state lands. So farmers who, who are on private land, sometimes they have real like mobile homes or things like that for their farmers, but that's not gonna, you can't move that onto state land. And so we're gonna have to figure out how we can develop or purchase apartment buildings for farmers, employees. And that was some of the things that Jimmy was working on uh, before he passed away. This is another graphic to show um, all the different components. So ADC is really, they're the landowner. And so what they're working with all these different, these are all the different components you need for the ecosystem. But if you know, ADC can't do it all. So that's where they need all these different partners. They need the nonprofits, they need the farmers, they need the financial institutions, they need government for incentives, um, infrastructure, workforce housing, food regulation, economic uh, education and workforce, uh, R&D, product development, and then there's lots of regulation and zoning and planning. Too often when we look at ag, we only think, oh, Department of Ag, or just CTAR, and they, that's all somehow gonna fix it all. It really has to be this overall macro vision of how we're going to tie the different elements of government together. So we acquired land, um, we're, we're, in, we're investing in infrastructure, we're working with the high school, we've invested, and we're working with the nonprofits in, create, in buying equipment for the, for the high school, uh, even taking the teachers on site visits to see different areas of, of the globe, New Zealand, Japan, Korea, of what can be taught get them excited about teaching ag. Okay. Uh, we're, the value-added center should be done in October. And it, it's really interesting because this is the one value-added center in the country that's tied to a community college. Like I said, the rest are all tied to universities. And then we need more, more types of space for warehouse space. We need cold storage space. We need manufacturing space. So, Instead of just acquiring land, I think ADC or, and or DOA has to start looking at warehouse space. Um, working with DBED, we're, we're looking at the Food Innovation Network. Monies were appropriated to ADC so that we can do proof of concept working with the University of Hawaii. Uh, this is the process that, this is the value added center right here that's gonna be up, it's up already. It's, it, um, they're, they're finishing it now. In a couple weeks, it should be open. Uh, this is their process of what, how they're going to train the students to become entrepreneurs. Uh, there are other opportunities we have with DBED on foreign trade zones and the enterprise zone programs. And like I said, we, you need to know the climate. 
What, what kind of capital do we need for infrastructure? How do we engage the community with education, with uh, community colleges, all those type of different ways we can engage the community into this more regional economic development plan? So I go back to how I started. So if we, if we have an ornamental regional economic de development plan for Hilo, imagine this, six months later, after Mary Monarch, we have the world's largest tropical ornamental show. And that's another way we can have visitors coming into tourism. So you start to leverage agriculture for ag tourism, for exporting, all these different components. From Molokai, the, some of the discussion is having a, regional, uh, a value added center there so that we can get um, access deer. We can do tanning, right, leather making. We can do meat products, jerky. We could do things with dog treats for the, with the antlers or for pharmaceuticals. There's now we can turn a problem into an asset and an economy. And it just starts with looking at each region and doing a mapping. And there's other, other places throughout the state that we've I clearly identified that's, that we could, we could start to do this. Mahalo. <laughs>